This is a video I uh, said I would make when I first introduced the uh, Vivaldi antenna to this channel. And uh, what I want to do is uh, see if I've got a uh, toilet brush holder here that I make uh, my uh, cantennas out of, is to uh, place the Vivaldi antenna in here just to see if it outperforms the uh, the simple monopole uh, antenna that you normally find in these waveguides because if it doesn't outperform it then it's not worth doing all the work in producing uh, this uh, element here you know when you compare it next to the monopole which is the simplest element you can produce now I have tried many different designs over the years to incorporate inside a waveguide like this and the only one that uh, has uh, shown any benefit over the simple monopole is uh, the Yagi antenna and uh, years and years ago I made the uh, Yagi in the can video and that outperformed the uh, monopole antenna but anything else that I've tried and I've tried lots of different things over the years just uh, you know doesn't perform as well as a simple monopole antenna so what I've got here then is some uh, single sided PCB, copper clad PCB that I picked up off eBay pretty cheaply. It's uh, a standard size that you can get off eBay. It's uh, 220 millimeters long and this was uh, 100 millimeters wide but I've cut it down to 90 millimeters just so we can fit it inside the can. So the design for this element is going to be as uh, simple as it gets. I mean uh, if this shows a lot of promise we can come back and revise this design for instance we can put curves in here we can drill holes in the sides here to help improve the VSWR uh, on the uh, antenna itself to hopefully improve it a little bit more but uh, just this basic design hopefully will show some promise over just a uh, monopole element inside the antenna now I will make a uh, template and uh, include it in the description of this video so you can download that and uh, follow the template if you want you can stick it on here and then use that to uh, cut out the elements for instance but uh, it really is uh, so simple to do this and you don't have to be super accurate as well that's one of the nice things about these uh, Vivaldi antennas is they're so so broadband you don't have to be uh, super accurate but uh, basically what I've done is I've drawn a line here 30 millimeters from the end of the PCB and that's where I'm going to start the uh, main driven element the slot here is the main driven element because uh, this particular antenna the Vivaldi antenna uh, belongs to the uh, slot family of antennas and uh, this slot here to here is uh, 58 millimeters in length and it's uh, eight millimeters wide I've basically uh, followed uh, the exact measurements that you would if you're going to build uh, a slot antenna so uh, eight millimeters wide and 58 millimeters long so now that I've got it marked out I'm going to cut all this out with uh, the bandsaw you can also use a uh, jigsaw or even a dremel tool with a uh, cutting wheel so that's the element cut out then and I've just cleaned up the uh, edges with this file here and what I'm going to do now is just uh, go over this with some wire wool just to deburr the uh, edges here a little bit and uh, also clean it up. So next I just need to cut a notch in the element, one here 15mm long and one here from the bottom 15mm long because remember it's 30mm from here to here and then they'll just fit together like so and we can uh, fit that then inside the waveguide. So I'm going to epoxy the two elements together now that I've got the slots cut out in there and to keep it even more stable I've got some uh, 8mm wooden dowel here, I've just cut a couple of grooves in the edges here just so it fits nice and snug in between there and this is going to be epoxied in to hold all the elements together. Now at this stage I'm not sure whether it's going to be best to keep both elements isolated from each other so one of these is going to be ground and one is going to be uh, the main driven element but uh, what I'm going to do is try isolating them first so I'm going to get my Dremel with a sanding drum and I'm just going to remove a little bit of the copper from around these two slits that I've cut out here just so they don't touch each other you know and uh, basically ground each other together it'll keep them both isolated so that's both of them ground away so now when we fit them together they uh, shouldn't make contact anymore 
So now that I've got uh, the elements all stuck together, I'm ready to uh, connect the coax. So I've prepared the coax as you can see here, and I've pre-tinned around the braid here around the ground and pre-tinned uh, the signal there. And uh, I'm going to solder it halfway along that slot. So this slot is 58 millimeters long. I'm just going to solder it at the halfway point, solder the ground down onto here, and then uh, the signal is just going to come across there and solder to uh, the opposite element there. So you can see the element sat inside now. I've threaded the uh, coax through the hole that I've drilled, and I've just drilled the hole a little bit off center so it's not uh, sitting on top of the coax. But uh, if we look at this side here, what I'm gonna have to do is remove some of the, uh, uh, the, the protection of the coax around here, expose some of that outer braid, flood that with solder, and I want to make contact with the can on this side. Now, I know from experience, I haven't been able to solder onto uh, any of these toilet brush holders for uh, a couple of years now. That's why I use screws now to uh, attach the SMA connectors to them. But uh, what I'm going to do is expose the uh, outer braid in this area here, flood quite a bit of solder around there, and then try and use that solder as uh, a kind of a rivet to make good contact with the can around there. And that's the solution I've come up just for now just so we can see if this uh, will work and will work much better than uh, you know a normal cantenna. So here we are then side by side let's give them uh, a scan then and see how the uh, Vivaldi one compares to the more traditional cantenna. I've got the Vivaldi one on the uh, right the traditional one on the left so let's give them a scan. It is raining quite heavily today so let's see what we come up with. So the Cantena one is picking up a few more access points but the Vivaldi one does seem to be performing really really well. If we take a look at uh, the same access points, this Boncare one here, and I'll put it on the graph and same here, I'll put it on the graph. You can see that it's uh, a lot stronger with the Valvaldi uh, Cantena than uh, the more traditional cantenna by about 10% and the Vivaldi one is pretty solid that uh, access point is pretty far away as well what I normally say if I can't pick up a uh, that uh, access point at least 50% with any directional antenna then I don't bother building it because uh, that's what I kind of try and aim for with uh, any directional antenna to pick up that particular access point uh, at 50% uh, or more, or around 48%. It's uh, pretty far away, it's a uh, old people's home. But uh, let's have uh, a look at uh, some other access points. Uh, the Cantena though seems to be picking up access points uh, a little bit further away as well. It's picking up the Wi-Fi repeater one that I know is just off to the uh, left of me here in the lab where the Vivaldi one isn't so I wonder if the uh, beam width on the Vivaldi cantenna is different to the more traditional cantenna but just going by that one access point it uh, looks very promising here's a similar one um, G2 put that on a graph it's dropped out a few times with the uh, Vivaldi one, but uh, the signal strength seems to be probably about the same between the two. So I definitely think a little bit more investigation with the Vivaldi design in a waveguide, see if we can uh, improve it a little bit more. You see the plus net access point here. It's uh, dropping in and out at 69% and it's, uh, dropping in and out around 58% over on the uh, more traditional Cantenna. It's probably a lot to do with the weather today as well though. And now we've got the Wi-Fi repeater access point. It's just dropped out again at 73% and if we look over here 
the maximum it was able uh, to see that access point in the traditional cantenna was 74% but uh, it's a lot stronger on the more traditional cantenna than it is with the Vivaldi so there's probably something going off with the beam width and uh, the radiation pattern of the two antennas there but uh, I do have to say that uh, it does look promising so to conclude the video then I think from that uh, little test the Vivaldi does have potential for uh, Wi-Fi I think if we uh, definitely spend some more time refining that design down even more I think we'll uh, definitely get more out of this and remember you know I want at least 10% across the board um, performance over a traditional cantenna otherwise in my view it's just not worth the effort to uh, make one but I do think you know if we spend some time with this design over on the network analyzer refine it down and uh, get it spot on over there and then come back and uh, build one of those and place it inside a uh, you know a can like this and then give it a test I do think it's going to be worth the time and effort because I think we will see uh, some uh, decent performance gains over a uh, traditional cantenna so there are going to be uh, follow-up videos of me uh, using the uh, network analyzer I'm going to use the network analyzer rather than the spectrum analyzer for this and uh, we're going to be building uh, prototypes out of cardboard and uh, copper tape or copper foil and uh, that means we can uh, build lots and lots very quickly and uh, very cheaply just to try out uh, different things so we can reshape the elements uh, a lot easier and uh, drill holes in the elements as well to see how that can improve things and uh, as I say once we get that improved we can come back over to the bench and uh, build a uh, proper version out of some PCB whether we do that by etching because uh, you know this is just a simple design if we start adding holes and uh, lots of curves and lots of other things to it then uh, possibly etching is the only way to go but uh, yeah I think uh, spending some more time on this in the future definitely uh, shows potential over a uh, traditional cantenna so I'm going to cut the video there then but uh, if you want to go back in the video and have a look at uh, those signals again but uh, do remember it is raining pretty heavy today it stopped briefly now but uh, it's been raining uh, quite heavily over the last few days but uh, that does affect the uh, signals quite a bit but you can see them side by side and uh, on some of those uh, you know access points this was doing a little bit better and that's probably down to whatever kind of radiation pattern that's forming out of this waveguide compared to a normal monopole uh, driven element so if you did uh, enjoy the video please give it a uh, thumbs up there will be uh, future videos on this I uh, promise because I'm uh, quite excited to uh, see where this uh, potentially goes but uh, if you've got any uh, ideas uh, on how we can improve this then uh, please drop uh, a comment below and if you did enjoy the video please give it a uh, thumbs up and hopefully you'll join me on the next one